Let's use the four-step solving process. We wish to test the following hypotheses at the alpha equals 0.05 level. So our null hypothesis is that p equals 0.5. Our alternative hypothesis is p is greater than 0.5, where p is the true proportion of the constituents who support the proposal. In the plan step, we need to list our conditions and also our inference procedure. So if conditions are met, we will do a one sample z test for population proportion. That's our inference method. The conditions are first random. The survey is of 80 randomly selected constituents, so that's met. For the independent condition, since we're sampling without replacement, we have to check the 10% condition. So as long as the school board official has at least 800 constituents, then our sample is no more than 10% of the population and the 10% condition is met. For the normal condition, we're gonna assume the null hypothesis is true. And if that's the case, the true proportion of constituents who support the proposal is 0.5. So N times P sub O, the null hypothesis proportion is 80 times 0.5. That's 40. N times Q sub O, which is the complement of P sub O, is also 40. So since both of these are greater than 10, it's safe to do normal calculations. For the do step, let's start by calculating p hat. 48 divided by 80 is 0.6. So 60% of our sample supported the proposal. To figure out what our test statistic is, we're gonna use this formula, p hat minus p sub o, all over the standard deviation of the sampling distribution if the null hypothesis is true. So I'm gonna rewrite this in calculator ready form. All right, we'll put it in the calculator and we get approximately 1.789. Now, what does this mean? Let me uh, stamp a normal distribution here and we'll look at it. If the null hypothesis is true and the proportion of constituents that support the claim is 0.5, we would expect a sample proportion that is close to that value. On our standardized curve here, a sample proportion that matches the population proportion would have a test statistic of zero, right in the middle. But our sample proportion was not 0.5, it was 0.6, and this is 1.789 standard deviations above the mean. So let's mark 1.789 on our normal distribution and shade this area. We can use inverse norm to find the p-value. So to do this on the calculator, we're gonna press second vars. This is our distribution menu. We'll go to norm CDF, and for our lower limit, we'll put 1.789. Our upper limit is going to be just a really large number, positive infinity, and we'll leave our mean and standard deviation as zero and one. Now when we press paste and then enter, we see our p-value is approximately 0.037. Now we're ready to conclude. With a p-value of about 0 0.037, which is less than alpha equals 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the majority of her constituents support the proposal. Before we move on to part B, let me show you another way to do the calculations. Start by pressing the stat button and go over to test. Select one prop Z test. Now up here, P sub O, that's going to be the proportion in our null hypothesis, so 0.5. X and N are about your sample, so X is the number of successes in your sample. So in this case, how many people in the sample supported the proposal? 48, out of a total of 80. Now down here, you're going to choose whatever direction is from your alternative hypothesis. So since she's interested in a majority, we're going to choose greater than P sub O. If you go down and select draw, it's gonna sketch our standardized normal curve with the critical value and the shaded p-value, and it gives you your information down here. But instead, we're gonna to go to calculate. So there's the same information we found by hand and by using norm CDF. Now we're ready to interpret that p-value in context, and we kind of already talked about it. If the true proportion of her constituents that support the proposal is 0.5, 
that is, if the null hypothesis is true, the probability of us getting a sample of 80 with 48 or more supporters, so 60% like we saw, is only about 0 0.037. So since this is a small probability, we reject the null hypothesis and support an alternative hypothesis that a majority of the constituents support the claim. Like this video? Check out my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It's got 100 problems, all with videos just like this. You can pick it up on Amazon.com.